Self-love is not making excuses. Self-love is applying discipline. Self-love is doing the things that make you fucking uncomfortable because you're worth it. You don't think they'll like the photo, so you don't post it. You don't think your story is good enough, so you don't write it. You don't think they want to hear what you have to say, so you don't say it. So often we reject ourselves before we give anyone else the chance to do it. Why? Because it really, really sucks getting rejected. I don't care how confident you think you are, no one, no one likes to be rejected. So to protect ourselves, our self-esteem, we often choose the safe route. Well, I'm your Google Maps and I'm here to tell you that that road leads to Nowhereville. But today's guest, an empowerment coach, podcast host, expert in beauty and wellness, writer and life athlete is here to help us navigate the potholes and roadblocks that hold us back from reaching our desired destination, Confidence City. A place where you don't think that they'll like the photo, but you post it anyway. Where you don't think your story is good enough, but you write it anyway and where you don't think they want to hear your story but you say it anyway the mindset and holistic performance coach and founder and ceo of black belt beauty and just an all-round badass my homie roxy safai <laughs> oh i love you i'm so excited <gasps> girl you thank girl. you for coming to the show uh, thank you for having me i miss you when i started to think about i want a badass freaking chick to, to just like don't pull any punches, be freaking honest. You were the first person that came to mind. Because, and I've actually got a quote that I'd like to start with. Yes. <clears throat> when you stop fighting yourself and start fighting for yourself, mm. the entire fucking game changes. Why do you think that we fight ourselves instinctually instead of fighting for ourselves? I think ultimately um, there's a lack of trust. To really trust yourself means that you are really rooted in your most authentic self. Like it or not, you're putting yourself out into the world as who you be, right? And I think that it, it takes a lot of courage and confidence to lean into this being that you are, in addition to really knowing who you are, self-awareness. If you don't have self-awareness, you don't have this deep sense of self-connection, which then really tr shows you who you truly are. And then that bridges us to being able to really love yourself, which I'm excited to talk to you about. <laughs> and then that bridges us to a deeper sense of self-confidence, which ultimately, we put all those ingredients together, you have the party that amounts to self-trust, right? Mm. Because you ultimately, when you say, I trust myself, you're also saying that, I got myself. I love myself. I, I'm willing to bet on myself. I don't want to exist in this world as anything but myself and let all that comes to me be the result of me being 100% myself. I mean, to be honest, I've never been anything but myself. Mm -hmm. So I should say that right off the bat. But where I have developed a deeper sense of trust and growth to really uh, develop, to, to expand this authenticity has been more along the lines of turning up the volume on myself. What does that mean exactly? It means not playing fucking small. It means you, you, you're willing to put yourself out there more and not be quiet and not to take up space, you know, and not in this, um, this way of like efforting, right? It's just when you know you, you have a mind, when you know you have a heart, when you know you have a voice and you're willing to share it, right? Unapologetically, it takes up space. It's noticeable. You know, you walk in the room and you're not trying to get attention, but because you are rooted in who you are and confidence, genuine confidence that is coming from within, self-validation, it's felt. 
it can make a lot of people really fucking uncomfortable. <laughs> and that is the space. And you have to be willing to say, I might make people uncomfortable, but I'm not willing to turn down the volume of my truth. I also know that I can make people really feel comfortable because in my being myself, in me being showing up and being 100% authentically who I am, I'm also giving permission to others to do the same, whether I realize it or not, you know, but it's true, it's, it's infectious, it's inspiring. And I think we certainly can use more of that because I do feel that there is um, a larger tendency to turn down the volume and to take less chances on, on really living from your most authentic self. Yeah, wow. Um, there's something that you said there that really hit me. So being unapologetically you. Yeah. So I want to really dig deep on that. So you mentioned awareness. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's the first step? It's absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So I would say that number one, um, if I want to give like a methodology that's yeah. supportive, journaling. I've been writing my entire life. And I, you know, when I started writing, it was not, oh, write down your goals and it's a high performance tool. No, I just, I needed to express myself. I needed to, 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 to put my thoughts out in front of me and to understand myself more, to discover myself more. And really, it's really important to, and this is really hard, but to, when I enter my journal, it, the objective lens is on, there's no judgment. And the more you do this, you sit with yourself and you start to realize more of yourself and you're paying attention to the layers under the layers of yourself, you start to become more connected. And when you start to really understand who you are, your values, your core beliefs, integrity, that starts to come in and that leads us to real self-love and compassion, right? And self-worth. But th all of that is gangster because that's the catalyst to put you in the position to seek the fight that develops the self-confidence. We don't, we cannot get, feel true self-confidence if we're not truly positioning ourselves to test ourselves, to know who we are, who we are in battle, who we are in challenge. Like, how do you show up? Who are you in those moments, right? When you, when you take a punch from life, like, do you stay down? Do you become the victim or do you get back up? Real self-confidence, the uh, precursor has to be self-love or else you're not, you, you're not really moving towards things with this deep sense of connection and I'm worth it. I need to get to the other side of that challenge. Hmm. For me, initially, when I started to hear it, it was always accept yourself for exactly how you are. Right. And I like that, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I need to add the but. There has to be the but because I worry I would be complacent. If yeah. I'm just saying, Lisa, you're okay the way you mm -hmm. are, exactly the way you are. You don't need to make any improvements. Love yourself, don't beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just like, but what am I then striving for? Right, right. And I think to love yourself is to say, this shit's hard. I'm not comfortable. But I love myself so damn much and I love what's on the other side of this, this vision that I hold, this impact that I want to make, that girl, you better get your ass up, <laughs> like get to that Toastmakers or to whatever it is, like get on the podcast, like do your thing. And that shit's hard. It's so hard to do. But I will tell you, because I know this as a through line in my life, that, that that's true self-love. And that's where you really develop this self-confidence piece that we're talking about. And it nothing feels better to me than being in that arena with yourself. Cause that's the thing, Lisa, sometimes it's really hard. Hand on heart, talk to myself. I'm like rocks. I love you, girl. I get it. This shit's hard, but you got it. Mm. Keep going. And in my experience, like to, to feel this dynamic, to have this kind of dialogue with myself is truly what allows me to be the woman that I am. And I love her. So if I want to, invite you to create this unbreakable relationship with yourself where you have, you know, the, all the S's and that self, self, self trust, that self love, that self confidence. Um, 
I'm going to invite you to really pay attention to your dialogue with yourself mm -hmm. and get into a loving dialogue with yourself, not to be confused with this. There's a difference between soft and fragile, mm. right? Soft can take a blow, like soft can take a punch, right? And if anything, I feel like it, it fortifies the strength mm. because it can take the hit, right? Fragile can shatter by a pebble, right? I have a very soft heart. I'm very empathetic, compassionate. I am, I am all love. And at the same time, my whole life, without ever having to prove anything, you know not to fuck with me. And that's what I freaking love, is that when you, you can literally just now talk about <laughs> self-love and then talk about freaking getting in a ring and taking a punch to the face <laughs> all in one sentence. So um, how do you advise someone to take those steps to start entering the ring? So let's say you're like, all right, put on your boxing gloves. They got on their boxing gloves, but now they're just petrified to step in the ring. Mm. What are the things that you can say that can help them that you did to your own mindset that you had to overcome yourself, yeah. the negative talk, the judgment, in order to get that first freaking step in that ring, even though you know you're gonna get hit, punched in the face. Yeah. Like no one wants to get punched in the face. Yeah, no, well, oh. <laughs> oh, go on. <laughs> oh, man. I love that you said that because it's something that I speak about often. Um, I feel that more people need to take a punch to their face. And I'm not saying that in, in the physical sense, right? When you take a punch, meaning like some kind of challenge has just, you know, sucker punched you, sideswiped you, whatever, like, oof, you discover who you are in that moment. Do you stay on the ground? Do you, do you cry? Do you become, do you feel sorry for yourself? Do you make excuses? Do you, do you back, do you back away? Or like, or do you, you go, huh? Okay. Well, that didn't feel good. How, how could I, how could I get better to avoid that punch or to be skilled to throw another, to throw a punch back, right? To knock that thing out that just, you know, tried to take me out. And so I want to hit all my goals, right? But what I'm really interested in is who am I on the way to the goal? I really invite the female to create this relationship with your future self. Who are you in the future? Who do you want to be? How does she move? How does she, how does she handle the hits that, you know, come to, is she composed? Is she freaking out? Is she, you know what I mean? And you start to really get connected with this future version of yourself, not just the things that she has, the life that she lives, because all of that comes after you've really created the being. It's the being that makes all this happen, right? Mm -hmm. Not the things and then becomes the being, right? So I really invite everyone to become friends with a journal. It's, it's the most important tool in my life, right? Mm -hmm. Because you really, like we were just saying, you start to really learn about who you are and create who it is that you want to become in this beautiful private space with yourself where there is no judgment. It will listen to you. It will, you could say anything to the journal. It's not going to judge you, right? It's just going to hold the space for you. So spending time with yourself every single day, I don't even care if it's five minutes, five minutes, just what I call rolling ink, streamlining of consciousness, get connected. Who is future Lisa? What are her habits like? What turns her on? What turns her off? What is she afraid of? How does she work through her fear? How does she face challenge? And when you really start to get so connected to the deep, because you literally create yourself, right? Mm. She starts showing up. This teammate, this soulmate, this best friend, this ride or die. And when you go back to the woman in the arena or the octagon, like in my world, you know, <laughs> UFC, MMA, like, you know, I'm not stepping in there just as this Roxy or this Roxanne. I've got my future self, my muse, my ride or die in there with me to move through that challenge with me, right? And so mm. I really, you know, to kind of put a bow on this, I think the most valuable methodology tactic is really spending time in your journal to deeply connect 
with who you are and developing a relationship with who you were blooming into. Mm. I love that. One thing I've actually phrased, I've repeated a lot recently, I don't know where it came from, but just keep repeating it, is like, what would have to be true? So going to your future self, yeah. right? If you're walking into that ring, like I'm li literally imagining, right? Like five versions of me behind me. And I'm like, okay, if I want these all to exist, yeah. as I'm stepping in the ring, mm -hmm. what has to be true for these to come into fruition? So as I'm stepping, okay, to be true, it means you're gonna have to fall many times and learn from it. Okay, right. so when I get punched in the face, I'm like, cool, I told myself that had to be true in order for this to exist. And going off exactly what you said, mm -hmm. Like, I love those two coming together so that you can say, I know the Roxy I want to be. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then in order for it to be true, taking the punches to the face. Yeah, it's, it's you know, for me to get to the woman in the mirror, to the, to the muse, um, I have to bet on myself. I have to do a lot of things that don't make me comfortable. I have to get comfortable in discomfort. Um, do you have a way of doing that? You know, it's like, listen, you've got great shoulders. How'd you get them? Tension. Tension develops, tension fortifies. So one of the greatest things that I've offered myself in my life is the reframe of challenge. Challenge to my mind literally is like bing, opportunity. Because on the other side of challenge is victory. Um, it's, it's the repetition work. There's no magic pill. You have to be relentless. You have to keep saying, I'm worth this next challenge. I'm mm. worth this next challenge. It's the repetition work. I'm not saying anything original here, but there's a reason why it's not original. There's a reason why this is a constant, you know, we hear about developing these skills, the skill that is confidence, the skill that is comfort and discomfort. It is the repetition work. You have to be willing to put the reps in. But then that brings us back to self-love, right? Hmm. Because you have to feel like you're worth it to do that work. I freaking love that so much. I actually have another great quote of yours. <laughs> this one was amazing. Confidence is one of the most important tools for building a life you love living because the truth is this shit is hard. <laughs> Self-doubt and legitimate obstacles will be constantly attacking your path to greatness. Confidence is a requirement to submit those challenges as they arise and to continuously rise from it. Because let's face it, nothing great has ever been achieved without hard showing up on the path to it. Confidence is a mindset and that is fortified when we put it to the test. No handouts, no shortcuts, pure effort, real results. No handouts to badassery. And you know this in your own life. The badass that you are is because you have and you continue to put the reps in. You do the work. When I was 17, 16 or 17, uh, in Taekwondo, I blew out my knee. It resulted in three back-to-back -back surgeries. And at that time, you know, I was an athlete, um, younger, I was a competitive runner. And then I started surfing and that became my whole life. And I was skateboarding and that was my life. And so all of a sudden, now I'm, you know, stuck in my bed in and out of surgery for three years. I'm on the American diet. Um, I had an eight pack, you know, just my genes, my family. And, and, and then all of a sudden I didn't. And so I gained probably somewhere between 30 to 40 pounds, right? In the span of a handful of years. It was very uncomfortable for so many years because I was living in this lower version of myself. That's not me being mean. That's me being honest. I know, I, I knew what health, like I, I understood that, that wasn't my body composition, right? And I mean, it ultimately is what led me to discover one of the greatest passions that I have in my life, which is, you know, health, holistic living, um, biology, nutraceuticals, nutrigenomics, all of this stuff, right? But I can't tell you how many times in, in, in those years of trying to get to homeostasis, essentially, right? You know, you're trying to take the magic pill, you're trying to shortcut, you're trying to, you're doing all the, no, no, when it shifted, when, it, when I brought myself home into my ultimate body composition, state of health, all that, was when I stopped the shortcuts or attempting the shortcuts and I started doing the real work with consistency. And it's, it, was hard, it was really hard in the beginning, especially when you're trying to develop um, 
new skills, new habits, and ultimately a new lifestyle, really, it's hard, right? It's repetition work. It's it's the long haul. Mm. But you're worth it. I love that you said the long haul because um, it's not one and done. It's not you cross the finish line. And me and you get... Like the words we use are yeah. very deliberate. Yeah. You say, which very much resonates with me, fight, step in the ring, take a punch, mm-hmm. um, get the fuck up. Like all this, these words evoke a certain emotion that now we, I feel, understand and yeah. use as the most effective tool possible. Yeah. There is no period at the end of, of confidence. Mm-hmm. There's a comma because it's something, again, going back to the, the repetition, the muscle piece, you have to keep putting tension on it. You have to keep fortifying it, nurturing it so that it stays strong, right? Every time I say yes to myself and I opt into the arena and the challenge, I am fortifying my self-confidence, right? So it's like you, you're carrying the self-confidence because I've, I've already tested myself. I have proof, right, of some badass things that I've done, some hardcore challenges that I've lived and I've succeeded. And I know that in, 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 in my own career life in the, in the past. And it's like, there's a really interesting, powerful crossroad because a lot of people will opt out of being their most authentic self Mm -hmm. to get the thing. Do you have a strategy on when you come to those situations, how you navigate and make sure that you're always doing things for your authentic self and not for let's say the shiny object, because that's very real, right? You may see something and people go towards it, yeah. but ultimately, if it's not in align with your authentic self, how do you come to that decision? So I like to reverse engineer a lot in my life, right? I would like to ask myself, how are you gonna feel about who you are in that moment? And if it's something that you can stand in and feel really good about, well, great, mm-hmm. that was a great decision. But if there's something that just feels like, ah, like there's a glitch in the system, you know, then maybe you need to reevaluate that, you know, and and rethink if if you actually want to move in that direction, you know? Mm -hmm. So yes, my confidence has been developed because I have, you know, conquered many challenges. I opt into the fight. I, you know, but honestly, a huge piece of my confidence has been developed because when I look back at my 42 years of living, I have authentically been myself no matter what. Mm. Like, no matter what. Have I played small in some situations? Yeah, probably that goes back to the turning up the volume piece. But I've never stepped away from who I am. So you like me. So I get that job. So that anything like that, right? So A, that's so freaking unique that (laughs) you like that. But I've also actually heard you say though that you use physicality, you use your body and movement Mm. as a way of gaining the competence, believing in yourself. Yeah. um, to gain confidence so that you can then use that confidence in other areas. Can yeah. you break that down for me a little bit? Yeah, it's so yeah, powerful. it's so fun. I love this. Um, so, you know, people have asked me so many times in my life, like, what do you train for? What do you train for? I mean, literally, I'm in my gym clothes or whatever. I'm checking out at Whole Foods. Oh, what do you compete? What do you train? I'm like, I don't, I, life, life is my sport, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, and, and, you know, I have many different modalities of movement. So, you know, I've grown up as a surfer. I have um, jujitsu for so many years now. I do these long distance 10K runs um, in, in the sand in my backyard, the beach. Lots of resistance training, hit. You know, I'm moving, yoga. And every single variation of modality offers me something that is deeper than just the physical benefit or the, you know, biology, you know, longevity benefit. There's a mindset component that is so deeply connected to each of these different forms of movement. To lift the weights and to feel my strength, I can feel how capable I am. When I'm on those long deep sand runs with Rocky on repeat and I feel like I'm climbing the mountain. This is the resilience, the endurance piece for life because you, you got to have endurance, right? Like I need to have endurance to withstand, to, to move through these challenges, right? In my family, we have a saying, if you can't do it tired, you can't do it at all. <laughs> and 
it, those runs are really tiring. And when I feel myself like, oh, oh, and the negotiations start of like, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what are the negotiations? The negotiations are like, oh, you know, you don't have to finish or you, you know, you're, you're five miles in or you're, you know. And, and when you, and when you, tw you get past those negotiations, every time you get past them, you have grown. And I think when you start to study the brain, it's really empowering when you really understand what the brain, so what, what's happening there is my brain's actually trying to protect me. Mm -hmm. It senses discomfort. This is how the brain works. No, 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 danger, danger, danger. But I'm not really in danger. I can stop at any time. There's no lion coming after me. This is just the signal is there of like, ooh, this is hard. This is uncomfortable. So when you when you when you actually start to learn about the brain and the function of the brain, you 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 empower yourself to you kind of separate this emotional kind of relationship. You're looking at it from like, huh, like from a student. You're learning about the brain. So in this, I'm gonna give you a real life example. This is gonna be fun. There's one day I'm literally walking to the backyard. I don't feel like doing the 10K. I don't have to do the 10K. I mean, let's, I don't, right? But, but uh, I identify myself as an athlete, right? A life athlete. And when you create an identity for yourself, you create a lifestyle that, that makes that identity true, right? All your habits, the way that you move through life. Otherwise you're full of shit and that's just not how I roll, right? So, you know, I didn't have to run a 10K, but the athlete in me is like, yes, you do. You, you had a day off yesterday and like, there's no reason for you not to. So I'm walking out to the beach, you know, I run barefoot, it's hot. And I'm like, okay. And now the negotiations start. Mm -hmm. Here they come. Rox, you just lifted heavy the other day. You, you, could, you could just do a 5K. And I'm, I'm watching myself go back to the self-awareness piece at the very beginning, because that journaling, the meditation, this has now allowed me to really zoom out and constantly be watching Roxy. And I literally, me over here, this sounds so funny, but it's humorous to me because I understand what's happening because I understand what the brain is trying to do. And then that, that part of me is like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make you run eight miles. You don't like, you better know. Like, whoosh. so you know the negotiation then needs the threat. Exactly, <laughs> it needs the push. And you know, it, it takes a lot to get into this place where you have this relationship. You know, if I was walking out there and I was tired or there was, this is different. You know, maybe my body actually needed an active rest day, but that's why I said like, there's no reason for me not to run that day. The only thing that was trying to get in my way was this, I don't want to do it, or it's uncomfortable, or you don't need to do it, right? And it's just, but it's unacceptable to me because who I identify with, she, she wouldn't accept that. Mm -hmm. She doesn't accept it. And that is what allows me to continue to grow in my life, mm -hmm. to not be complacent, to not settle. One thing that I've never been turned on by is this, oh, I wish I was, I wish I was, mm -hmm. well, fucking do it, mm -hmm. become the thing. If you want this, and you, there's a lot of things that are not in your control, but there's so much that is, mm -hmm. right? So then just do it, girl. Like put, opt yourself in, do the work. It's the best work you can do, you know? Yeah, that's so interesting. Cause even when you were saying like all the things that you do, it sounds exhausting. And in my head, I'm thinking to myself, oh God, I can't do that. And as you're saying it, and my mind is going, I can't do that. In real time, I'm like, don't you ever say you can't do it, Lisa. I love you, Lisa. And as you're saying it, I was like, 10K, I would be, if I had to crawl, girl, on my hands and elbows and you. knees to do that 10K, I would freaking make sure that I did it. And that's where everything you're saying, the fortification of what you're saying is because I've done the, the 20 years or the fortification of the mind mm -hmm. by doing the small things, by starting small. I had a quote that you said, and I don't know if it's your quote, but it hit me really hard, is um, it's the baby step to the mile. Really? And so the, the constant practice, the constant reassessment, the constant learning. And so for me, even me in real time, I was saying I can't. And then I was like, oh no, if I had to blood, sweat, tears, scraped knees, I would make sure I got to that 10K if I had to. Where do you think that comes from, actually? Let me ask you, this is a great flip for a second, but is that your ego or is that? No, it used to be. Mm. 
Now it's, I believe, thought to everything. And if I tell myself I can't do one thing, it starts to be the slow poison that seeps into everything else. So if I tell myself I can't run 10K, what else am I going to say that but I can't do? But why does do? that matter to you? Because it puts limitations on my life. But and why does that matter? I like to, oh, I love this questioning. What fuels me every morning is that I can wake up and be better today than I was yesterday. Otherwise, what am I doing? Right. And why does that even matter to you? It comes to self-esteem. And where do you think that that really comes from? Hmm. I'm not sure if this is what you're saying, but everything to me comes down to how do you feel about yourself when you're by yourself? And it doesn't matter how much wealth you have. It doesn't matter how much success you have. If you don't like yourself, yeah. if you're not proud of yourself, even though you tried, even if I failed, 100%. I can be proud that I tried. Yes. So that's what matters. And when I go to bed at night, when I wake up in the morning, I want to feel that way. I want to feel like I'm feeling good. Everything that I'm doing is making me feel good about myself because that's that's really ultimately going to what you were saying earlier about control. There's so many things I can't control no. that I can. Right. And I, I feel that's where I throw in the self-love. You care about how you feel about yourself mm. and fuck, you should. You know, it's a beautiful experience to actually care about how you feel and then to position yourself to, to do the things that are going to make you feel even more proud of yourself, to feel more reverence for yourself, to feel more love for yourself. You know, I, I'm not someone who's, um, uh, let me say, like, I don't like to go too labely, but I am more introverted and um, I'm not someone who's really turned on by, hey, everybody look at me. But, you know, when I started the podcast, uh, the, the, December's three years, you know, I had to, I love to communicate, you know, writing. I love to have conversations, but it, it's also a form of public speaking, right? Mm -hmm. You have to put yourself out there and um, that was uncomfortable, right, to, to do that. But knowing that, um, I'm here to be a real contributor and I really have things to share and I want to continue learning and growing and getting better and, and, and collaborating. I had to put myself in that position. I had to go for it, right? I had to say, okay, I know this might not be comfortable, but we know you'll just get better. You'll get more comfortable. And at the end of the day, Rox, you're going to affect people in, in a beautiful, empowering way. So you got to, you got to get out of your way right now, move into that discomfort and, and just, um, get better every day right and and do the thing so when you think about challenge and struggle you know struggle is very disempowering it's like this like ah oh, i'm having a hard time to where like you know and i don't want to say that in a way where it's like some people might be struggling. there's real struggles i have felt it in my own life but when we start to really shift perspective and do the work that fortifies our self-confidence and our competence we reframe this hard from, you know, am I really struggling right now? Or am I just under a lot of challenge right now? But it's just reframing this hard and this challenge so that it, 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 it triggers a different part of your mindset to say like, ooh, what am I gonna learn? How am I gonna get better? Who, who you're watching the movie, like, how does she win right now? Like, what does she do, you know, versus the, the struggle and it's almost like there is defeat that's already living in there but challenges is, is not inviting defeat yes. right yes right it's that's inviting. really freaking powerful yeah but going back to everything you've been saying this episode girl is practice constantly yeah like doing these tools having the tools developing the tools and you even said it it's a freaking skill it really is you know one of the greatest things i just want to offer this i mean we hear about this often but i i want to talk about the morning ritual because i think it's a it's a really everybody's life is different i understand like some people don't have like you know two hours to sit there and like meditate and do all the things but even just 10 minutes just to sit with yourself to notice your breath. If, if you're not into meditation, um, I invite you to try and get into meditation, but just even closing your eyes, witnessing your thoughts, feeling your body, and then getting into a streamline of consciousness in your journal, mm -hmm. right? you leaning into the journal, giving yourself time just for you before you give yourself to the world and answer the emails and do the things and all that, 
right? At the start of your day is so powerful because I know how you start your day is going to impact the rest of your day. I'm not saying that you could have the most like delicious 10 minutes or hour morning you time and still have a gnarly day of, you know, all kinds of things you don't want to be dealing with coming at you. But your ability to be resilient and to handle those things is so much more powerful when you spent that time with yourself. Not only that, but going back to this kind of big picture repetition work, inches make the mile, that piece right there, Lisa, it, it's it's incredible what that ripple effect does. And the more you do it, because again, that self-awareness and that self-connection, the, these are the anchoring pieces that are going to perpetuate the self-love, the self-confidence, and give you this self-trust when you're really living this whole thing. And watch, like when you are consistent, because we know consistency is the magic word it's in every situation, in your, your diet, your, your training, your business. Um, when, you, when you are consistent with this one habit, even at the small little 10 minute um, time period, it will have a, an um, enormous amount of positive effect on the, who you are mm. and how you move through your life. Girl, you know, we, know. we can literally talk for another four hours, me and you. So um, I freaking love I you, love girl. I love you. Um, where can people find you and everything that you're doing and this amazing <laughs> shirt that she gifted me? Where can everyone find all oh this Oh my gosh, stuff? thank you so much, Lisa. I love you so much. Um, so social media, Roxy Look, Black Belt Beauty. And I would say make yourself at home, blackbeltbeauty.com. You know, there's a lot of rad resources there. Obviously you can shop there, but I'm also launching an exclusive community called Queendom there soon. Oh, which is yeah! <laughs> it's going to be a, I mean, a badass group of high-minded women, you know, a non-toxic environment. Um, and just, it's, it's going to feel like home to badass women who want to keep fortifying themselves in their life. So Everything that you need to to learn to opt into Queendom is all there, blackboutbeauty.com. And then obviously the podcast is Black Belt Beauty Radio. And I love you. I appreciate you. You are a badass seeking the fight. You inspire me every single day. So thank you. Oh, God. Guys, guys, she is such a good friend of mine. You got to go check her out. Everything she does is freaking fire. I hope she impacts your life just as much as she's impacted mine. And if this episode brought you value, guys, please, please do comment, subscribe, share this episode. And if you're not following me, follow me at Lisa Billu. And until next time, be the hero of your own life. Peace out. What up, guys? Thanks so much for watching this video. If you'd like another dose of bad arsery, make sure you watch this video right here or this one right here, because I know you'll like them. But hey, also, while you're here, guys, you might as well click that subscribe button down there so you don't miss any future episodes. And until next time, be the hero of your own life. Peace out.